my name is Bruce, and this is Table Breakers. With us tonight, we have our motley crew of special individuals. We have the top there, Mr. Baron G. Rock, myself, and the second to the right, Mr. Connell, the Cigar DM, below that, then Shadow and from Shadow and Sun Channel, and Kai Hi, from folks. Faint Rant of Kai. And tonight, hosting the game, which we started last week, a very fun one, I might add, is our friend, front and center, the Crafting Gamer. How are you tonight, sir? Evening. I'm good. <laughs> to be fair, I'm waiting for his internet to crap out on him again like it did last week. No jinx. So I'm be perfectly honest, because it went a little wonky for a few seconds. <laughs> I mean, it's not there. jinky. It's not jinking. We just things that we accept. Hold on to your dookie. It's about to get spooky. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nerds, nerd. How you doing? Welcome to the show. All right. So I'm going to turn it over to the host of tonight's show, Mr. The Crafting Gamer. And I appreciate everybody for showing up. Some of you will be here later and see this, or some of you might not. But I do hope you enjoy what we do see. All right. Well, let's get straight, straight away. As you land the fish on the island, the uh, ship barely noticed the weight difference. So, hold on a second. I'm looking for a picture because I forgot something. Here, uh, Okay, there it is. Sorry. Forgot to get this prepared earlier. Okay, anyway. As you guys land, you know you'll have to literally carve the harpoon out. So what you guys doing? That would be cook. Okay. Oh, um, Baron. Who was that? That's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That noise. It's horrible. Yes. Hold on a second, I forgot. I need to pull up a bit of information. I don't think your character has Oh no, but okay. Go ahead and give me a percentile roll, please. Who get, who do you want the percentile roll from? From me. Uh, Baron. Okay. Sorry. Need me to roll it real quick? Nope, I got it. 55. Right. I had to dig my dice out. <laughs> Oops. Ah. The fish might have some useful components, but you're going to have to spend some time figuring that out. But that's not me. That would be Bruce. He's the cook. Oh, no. I meant for your what you do. Oh. Okay. Don't I'll forget. spend some time to figure it out. It's got it's got swim bladders. It's got phosphorescent. And don't forget, this was basically a giant anglerfish. You, so did, it's did all plus the giant fish have other things. Let me get back in character. Did somebody say they had some special ingredients? For me. Oh. Well, in your case... Fish oil is good uh, lubricant. You're not... Yeah, that's one of the other things. Uh, Alright. Uh, Bruce, I'm going to say you need a percentile roll to get, your, get what your work done because you're not in any rush to get it done, so it's a matter of time. Good food. So, how fa Good food is not fancy do you want to get with your? Do you want to like? Okay. Then I'm going to say you take your time. You cut this perfect, which means That's it'll take a couple enough. of days. But thankfully, uh, uh, skyfish I, doesn't rot right away. I, I, I it actually I takes about I a week before the flesh starts starts stinking. I think, 
I think I messed up. Oh. What's wrong? Uh, something happened uh, in the kitchen and um, may have to get an auxiliary meal going on. Hold on. I rolled kind of high. Well, Bruce, you don't have to rule for anything if you're taking your time. We're not oh, I don't have to rule anything if I'm ta- I am going to take my time. I, if, I, if, I, if you're going to give me uh, a schedule for a menu, then Sheffield is not going to hurt you and uh, make you have mystery meat or uh, impromptu spam cuisine. We're going to eat well, and I'm going to do a minimum prep well, time it, about eight hours. Say again, sir. Well, you got that easily. I said you got that easily. The um, skyfish generally doesn't rot for about a week. It's because it's usually full of uh, it's such full of fat that the fat has to reach a certain point before it starts decaying. Well, there's a reason why I like skyfish over salmon. Salmon's great if you got to be in the performance arts, but I I like skyfish quite a bit. All right, it's going to take him. And I would. You say you're going to take eight hours to prep the fish before you actually start carving. Yes, I'm. I'm going to take my time on this. We. I'm, how many? How okay. many pounds of, of fish meat am I? Do I have here? I do have a formula. I need. I need roughly about. For every hour, I need. For every three pounds, I need one hour. Well, this fish is about the size and girth of your of your um, oh, ship. Ship. Mm-hmm. We have lots of meat, and yeah, it's it's we a good amount food. of meat. You'll you'll have enough oh. to fill your entire stores, and have meat left over. All right. Um, and by I'm the percentile work. roll that happened last week, you also have a salt deposit on the island, so you don't have to use up your supply. Well. I guess um, I'm going to just merely before I but before I do any work in the kitchen, I'm going to refresh myself on the finer arts of keeping the kitchen by Mr. S- uh, Master Chef Gordon Ramsay. And after I get done, I, I'm, I'm going to while I'm cooking, you may hear me drop some profanity while I'm working this fish meat out because I do want to be in a particularly good mood to make sure that my people are well taken care of they're nourished i don't need people to have problems they need to be uh not full bellied but they need to have enough fuel to take them another eight hours and that's the goal yeah if they if they wish to overeat that's all them and uh i wouldn't i wouldn't suggest overeating on skyfish because it uh, if you if you eat too much then you're gonna have a like a temporary diabetes condition set in and you're going to have what we call the itis. I don't want you to have the itis. Okay, Baron. Five hours mm-hmm. into uh, <clears throat> the chef doing his work, you get a chair. Uh, up to that point, you've been okay. This has useful general stuff like okay, I can use this for this. I can use this for that. Like nothing special. Give me another percentile roll, please. Nineteen. The phosphorus in you have discovered as you're checking out the phosphorus in its uh, glowy bit up its off the top of its head. That can be used to save you about. Twenty-five percent of the cost of a um, missile of one of your missiles that cost about a thousand credit, about a thousand per team to make. With this, you have enough to reduce the price tag to 70, 7500 uh, ah, seven hundred and fifty, because you're basically replacing the uh, fuel, main fuel component. Yeah. 
for holy shit uh for about 90 missiles so you you got enough phosphorus to cut your expenses by a quarter for a good while or at least whatever it is that the is in the land the glowy bit of the of the fish why do why does my dice love you guys i never roll that good for me because we're so lovable <laughs> Well, some of us are. As you love us, and it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you go about the next couple of days, what does everyone intend to do? Uh, next, the, the, the beginning of the next day, I am going to eat that fruit with my um, orange juice. I don't know. Okay. Oh, you did this last week already, and you almost vomited because it tastes terrible. All right. Well, then uh, I'm just going to go somewhere yeah. close enough to the ship and not where I'm going to set up. Far enough where I don't have to worry about setting it on fire, but close enough where I can still like see the mass or something so I know which direction I'm going back to and figuring out the abilities. Well, there is a salt deposit in, where it's there's enough salt you can start playing with your fire without setting the island on fire too. But it's not on the other side of the island, but it's a it, for you about a hour's travel. Probably not even an hour. Shit, this thing's like the island's 35 miles by 35 miles, so you'll get there in no time with flying right. anyway. Oh yeah, have I uh, discovered I can fly? Yeah, that was one of the first things you discovered. <laughs> um, well, your also... entire body. Well, I'm, hold on a second. I'm, Think of it this way. Your entire body turned to fire all at once. So you actually had to learn to not float. Oh, that was shit. the first thing you had to learn. <laughs> all right. Uh, excuse me, the, the crafting game. I would like to, yes. to also make sure that while we're doing this, I'm going to put some nootropics within the fish before we uh, have our, our, our blessed dinner. Uh, one of the okay. things I'm going to get in there is some in acetyl L tyrosine, which is uh, when your tyrosine reserves run low and an overstressed or overexcited brain, like many of my compatriots, uh, you got to supplement it with non acetyl L tyrosine, or also known as NALT. It helps ease crashes associated with stress, sleep deprivation, activity, and anxiety. And I want to make sure that I'm, I'm injecting this into the meat. I want to make sure that this is, is going in because I, I can't have my crew having problems. I need them to be operating like as if uh, they were just drinking like, you know, straight Colombian black bean coffee. Mm. Okay, so basically you want to add a pers uh, a boost to their, men to their mental stats. Correct. Yeah, at least at least for another four hours. He's trying to put saltpeter in our uh, our food. No, 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 no. I wouldn't be doing that to you. I, I would actually be <laughs> I would actually be adding in some funny little blue pills whenever we go to our shore leave planet. Can't be having can't be having you falling down whenever all the skirts are up. Come on now. <laughs> well, the chef does have alchemy, so you would know how. Uh, yeah, yeah, that uh, uh, you got a boost uh, a boost of plus two to all mental stats, and it'll last for the next four hours, just like you wanted. That's with a casual serving of uh, eight ounces of that skyfish. Yeah. Well, especially compared I don't, to. I, I don't be recommending don't like, you, you can, know, 16 ounces of it. Yeah. Well, well don't forget, you all, you can also prepare normal meals too, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I could, but I'm, I'm trying to make sure my guys are fly and they, they uh, don't have any performance issues. Okay. Yeah. All right. If I was if I was Black Dynamite, I would be a Kung Fu uh, master. Hey. Anybody on patrol? The captain himself feels like this is a pretty safe area. You guys have been through these islands before. Chances of being attacked by something big in the night are not high, but high enough that he would personally like somebody on night watch. 
I, I, I don't know about bar. Night Watch, but I will be exploring the island. In the middle of the night? I will ensure yeah. that the ship is not No, in the middle away. of the night, I'll be sleeping. Okay. I'll take the midnight watch. Well, the the, the I, I uh, forgot there was a robot aboard the ship. Our, the, our sentry is also going to be doing night watch also all night. So, oh. sentry bot. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, L skyships. I know that would also be I, good to have at least one person with them. Yeah, that is true. I'll go ahead and do the first night watch. Okay. We'll just say, uh, unless somebody's specifically opting out, we'll just say you take your turns and call it good at that. Nope. Morning. Uh, no, no, uh, excuse me. Uh, if you're taking first watch, we'll say, uh, yeah, that happened at the first roll. Okay, so yeah. Uh, Connell. Yes. Give, uh, give me a percent. Uh, hold on a second. Let me double check your stats here. I need you to make a mental perception. I think it's percent. Uh, yeah. Mental perception. Uh, yeah. Oh, you don't have a very high mental perception. So uh, uh, roll d d20 for me, please, Connell. I rolled a two. Ha! 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 You lucky. You only got a uh, mental perception of seven, and you got to don't forget you got to roll under. So you lucked out. Oh, uh, you quickly notice uh, a several of. Hold on a second. Let's see here. Present. Share screen. Fuck. Roll down games. Jade, you're missing out. Well, you got Jade on speed dial. Let's see here, where are others? Okay. Give, give that man a buzz. Say we got yourself a keg to sheep. Be ready to go. Come okay, on. Okay, pictures up. Uh -oh. You see this? Well, several of these. Stick figure exactly. here represents the size of. Well, that is definitely. No, that's that is definitely one giant. That's a, one angry vagina. <laughs> it's supposed to be a fish with a giant mouth, and the stick well, figure here represents your its size to you. Oh. Okay. Is it eat time? <laughs> no, it does not. Mm -hmm. Fish is back on that menu, boys. Come quiet. Come quiet. Come quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come quiet is my safety word. Uh, you could have. Uh, I left everybody's hobbies open. Would you like to have, since you're in this situation, would you like to have the hobby um, understand animals? I left the hobbies open so you, so you guys in the moment go, okay, this will be useful. So the characters weren't 100% taken over by uh, me or. 100% me. This is definitely sure. meant to be a player creates the char character type game. Uh-huh. Sure. Unless you're, uh, unless you're Shadow who's can complete co control freak, right? Uh, yeah. Anyway. Or are you um, just going to attack them? Um, or, are you, or, or what are you going to do is I should put that since there's plenty of options. I think I'm going to set off the alarm to let the other people know what's going on. Okay. And I'm going to act like Johnny Storm and uh, start. Oh, almost forgot. Uh, you see those creatures at the opposite end of the fish. Bruce is at the good end, about uh, close to the shoulders, middle section. They're at the tail. You're about to say something, Kai? Well, I thought he was. Okay. He muted himself. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Anyway, and the creatures are munching down on the tail of the giant fish. Well, the little fish are, anyway.
Um, I'm really not in the mood to be. Playing. So yeah, you'd let everybody know. Uh, I'm going to presume everybody runs on deck. I mean, I don't see why not if someone raises an alarm. Get the clacks and alarms going off. You know what that sound is. <laughs> And please tune in to us in the month of February next year, and I will be running the D20 Black Exploitation game of Solid. <laughs> well, the, uh, the captain, the, when the captain the sees century, the oh, sorry, Sentry's taking aim. Waiting orders. As you guys, uh, well, as the captain runs on deck, he looks at the fish. He's like, hold on, don't do anything. He runs back to his cabin, pulls, comes back out. He's got a piece of paper in his hand. He looks at them, looks at the paper. We're two islands away from where we're supposed to find these things, and yet there they are. He hands you guys the paper, and you see the fish that I showed you guys just a minute ago. <laughs> these, are what we're, these are what we're paid to catch. Alive or dead? A uh, common strategy, if you have a refractionist on board, is to beat them to death and then resurrect them. Because you can do that if you do it within 24 hours. Hmm. Okay. All right, well, let's start beating them to death. Well, the ref this is where I had an idea of... Uh, what Kai might want to do. The refractionist is trying a new refraction that he came up with himself. Huh, I'm no, I'm no, I'm no spell slinger. So. Did I, it, Jay. He had it one job. Like, what was that? I said, damn it, Jade, you had one job. <laughs> <laughs> Look, well, the refraction, sorry. Do you want me to just to, you know, pin him to the ground so that way they can be um, blasted? Uh, the refractionist asks him, ask you guys to give him three hours to attempt his spell on one. After that, we can catch him the normal method. Well, I guess we're sitting around for th uh, three hours staring at weird ass um, fish. Yeah. I, I'm going to rename these angry vagina fish. <laughs> well, as the refractionist sits there and kind of chance and sits not necessarily in a circle but he sits there and chants staring at one of the fish you watch one of them after three hours swim towards the ship not aggressively he says don't attack it it swims aboard goes down into the hold and swims into one of the cages you have down down in the hold and just sits there the fuck i'll go and lock the cage Jade mentioned the idea of being a fate mage. And it's not outside the realm of possibility, so I made up a spell. He changed the fate of the fish. The, its fate was now to be captured and used as a pack animal. How many of these things do we need? Uh, as many as you can get, because they're only 10000 apiece. And you guys, st well, the captain still owes a debt, and he'll, he'll pay you based off of what he... Unless you guys revolt, the idea is a certain percentage gets paid off to the ship immediately. You guys split the rest. But um, something that the captain is mentioning is that if if we could find a nest and cap and get any uh, eggs, eggs are worth fifty thousand per team apiece. Nobody's able to breed these things in in captivity, so eggs are really valuable. Okay. Now, I know for a fact Shadow's character has uh, understanding animals. Therefore, he'd actually have the highest chance of finding the nest. So where do I suspect it would be here? Caves. One of their favorite things to do is ambush uh, creatures at cave mouths or the edge of islands. 
and their mouth is so big that it's usually swallowed prey in one bite. A rare opportunity such as a giant fish on an island, a pack of uh, six, yeah, six, couldn't uh, pass up. But as you as it sits right now there, um, yeah, I'll say you can uh, you, you deduce that they don't leave the nest unguarded. But if there's six here, chances are there's less than six at the nest right now. Do we let our spellcaster go hunt down? I cast more more um, fate bait, uh, fate bending magic and yeah, it uh, takes. It takes one d four hours to do, so if I mean, you want to do that for this for the six the that less, are here. The less that we're going to get, because these are these look pretty hostile, right? Because they're about man size, teeth as big as they my consider fingers. humans. They consider humans prey. Prey. So, yes. Well, I'm pretty sure that we're we could probably beat the sense beat them senseless. We have a safe way to harvest. We should probably use the safest bet. I know it sounds kind of counterproductive, but I like my limbs attached. I'm It'll take you 11 hours to capture the, the five remaining. Hey, we were still to, hey, we were still a day from getting to the hunting grounds anyway. So we're going to get as many as we can now safe. Yep. Uh, Refractionist, I mean not refractionist. Uh, shipwright, uh, Baron, you might want to consider making more cages. Because if the, if this is just this island this? and you have more islands to go, you're gonna run out of cages. You only brought. Do we 10. have enough? Okay. Do we have enough well, materials can... to make more cages? Uh, well, if their fates get changed, you can make the cages out of wood. Okay. But uh, as for regular materials, yeah, you uh, this game is meant to be kind of cinematic. So in your in the case, unless the and I'll even write it in, unless the GM and the players really want to be uh, rules lawyery about it, you'll have the supplies on hand. We're also on an island, you know, and if we had to slaughter some to make room for more, well, this is makes processing so much easier when they're just cattle in cages. They'd be like shooting fish in a barrel. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> well, so, yeah. Uh, anybody going to go with uh, the marksman to scout out the cave? Oh, of course. I'm in the right. kitchen. Uh, I will go with them. That's my job. I have to go with I am what you bring me around for. Right. The captain is also going along. Let's see here. Uh going the Uh, we're going to say, oh, everybody's busy. Crap. Um, and we split the party. Well, yeah, but it's more the fact of who is the captain going to leave in charge. Everybody's busy. <laughs> he leaves his, I don't know. Well, how long is it going to take me to build those cages? Oh, not very long. Yeah. Oh. Um, when you said full body conversion, my first thought was Frankie style. Not necessarily look like Frankie, but your versatility. Well, I when I did the full body conversion, I'm kind of, in my mind. I kind of have the uh, oh, what's his name from Doom Patrol? Of uh, Brandon Frazier's? Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know Doom Patrol. God, hold on. Robbie? No. Steel. What's his name? Robot Man. 
His Robot name's Man. Cliff Steele, but his character character's name's Robot Man. Yeah. I <laughs> love that character from Brandon Fraser. Uh, uh, we'll just say the captain. Uh, the captain leaves Baron in charge. After all, the Baron does uh, have the ability to walk away, where the uh, where the cat, chef kind of doesn't. If he does, he burns his food. And the boat. Yeah, and the boat. Okay, so Baron is in charge. So the captain gets back. You're walking along. There's all kinds of different things on the island. Larger, pretty big insects, most of them not hostile to humans. You see a couple of primate types. As you go along, nothing particular happens. When you get to the edge of the cave, well, a cave, I should say, because there's two caves on this island. Huh. It is not guarded by any fish, but uh, we'll say, uh, yeah, uh, Shadow, you uh, recognize the smell. If the nest isn't here, it definitely is somewhere deeper inside the cave. Who's coming is with? There a way we can, is there a way we can draw them out? Uh, well, the ones that weren't guarding the nest have already been drawn out. Any left would probably be guarding the nest. Where are they like? Mean? Mean. Is there a way to draw them out? Oh, uh, bang really, really loud on a, a, a on the side of a wall until they come out. Make noise. Throw lights. I'm wondering what the what the young are like. More pissed off, tasty. The ketchup, or tartar sauce. The young, uh, young are Lemons. born predators. They they eat things from anything they can fit their mouth on, basically from the moment they're born. I'm also trying to remember what the nesting habits are. Uh, they are known for uh, nesting. About uh, not too far from the entrance of a cave, but sometimes deep in if they uh, get attacked frequently. Uh, a male generally stays behind to guard the nest, only leaving if it starts uh, becoming weak from hunger. And even then, if it will, if it fails within twenty minutes to an hour, it'll go back to the nest anyway. And as for drawing it out, the best way to do that would be to actually. Uh, uh, Make some sort of smell that will attract it. So, is there a place on the ship where the smells from the kitchen kind of exit out of? Yes. We will. There, there is a bench the on the galleon. Yeah, we will. We will park it to the way that the that the the smells will waft into the into the cave. That won't be hard. The cave, the cave entrance is huge. So, like, kind of below, just so it kind of gets swapped in there, and they come out, and then we can do it. All right. Well, since you didn't go along, that would be have to be something either the. Uh, well, actually, with that said, it is possible within this world to have long distance communication. So. Well, that we have the ship. Well, no, what I mean was, uh, like, for example, Shadow says, hey, I found, Shadow's character says, hey, on a rocky talkie type thing, hey, I found this. And then you come up with that suggestion. Otherwise, it's a kind of out of character knowledge. Well, yeah. I and thought I'm, we were all that's why I apologize. Uh, you <laughs> said you stayed behind on the ship to make cages, right? Well, I, and I was in charge, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, either way, I, I, 
I know it wasn't said at the beginning, but long distance communication is perfectly within the reason of understanding of this game. Plus, I could see that being something Baron made. Like that's that's part of what his character is supposed to be is just tinkering and making random things. Yes. So I'll recall everyone except for Shadow's character. Alrighty. Well, Captain likes the plan. How, how much more sh uh, fish is there left to be harvested? Well, it'll take a couple days to. Uh, it'll take days, days to two. fully fill the. Um, yeah. Uh, how much do you want? The ship itself can hold a. I, I put it in tonnage. I gotta. I gotta work more space into the description, but basically twenty tons. Before the hidden cargo, another uh, two or five tons with the hidden cargo. Yes, the ship has a hidden cargo bay. Of course it does. I mean, Imperial blockades are hard to run. So yeah, at any rate, you can fit, geez, 20 tons of that size. of. I'd say you could fit the entire fish in here if you take Render your time. It. Yeah. Can we hack it up enough that we can transport it onto the ship and he can finish, you know, taking care of it on the ship? You have a swordsman. That should answer your question. Yes. So let's do that. Can do. Now, you've already mentioned that you don't put the third sword in your mouth, right? Uh, I have six of them now, and no. I have a variety of... Um, I have the whole rainbow of weapon flavors at this point. <laughs> we yeah, he literally has each copy. color value. What was that you said Sorry, there, Conway? We have to get you that cod piece that you could fit, like the uh, handle of the sword in. No, no. My entire thing is going to be literally <laughs> throwing weapons soon, so I don't care. I I need spares because I'd miss, or you know, I leave somebody pinned to a wall, and I want to leave them there and still fight. All right. Well. Kai, uh, we'll just say Kai, Kai cuts it up into nice sized chunks with ease. Of course I do. After, well, though, after uh, the refractionist does his capturing of the fish so it doesn't disturb them and just the capturing is super easy that way. But as soon as the last one's in a cage, Kai just basically looks at the fish, takes out one of his swords by a half an inch to two inches and puts it back. And the fish Pretty just flash. falls apart. Slash, slash. There we go. This is this is what I do in the off hours when I'm not helping a, a, an a, 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 sorry an international thief rob banks. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it'll still take a couple hours to haul everything on board because it is a big ass fish, but it's not that hard. You do so. It's a, uh, we'll say, uh, with eleven hours starting first thing in the well, starting at the middle of the night, and we'll say it's it's just about evening now. When you get over to the uh, to the um, uh, cave and start wafting the smell in. Takes about. 40 minutes for the entrance of the cave to start moving. And not the entire cave, just the fact you see something moving in the shadows. So I'll look at our refractionist and go, okay. He is now doing this because the creature it could potentially run away. He's now doing this under caress. And 
takes two chances. And okay. With two chances, one of terrible failure and one minor success, but the fish failed to resist. The, uh, the last the last fish, presumably, is now aboard the ship. So you have seven fish. Okay, is there any young in there? Oh, that would take a going to look. Yeah, we'll go down there and look. Okay. Will the ship fit through the cave? Uh, for about, ninety percent of it, it's a big ass cave. Apparently, I'm assuming we have some way of lighting so we can actually see. Oh yeah, there's refractions okay. for that. Uh, I mean, ships themselves are meant to also some ships are meant to uh sail at night and i would presume uh someone in once again i'd presume you being the ship right would have lights on the ship for your cans at the very least okay just making sure so as you're going through we, will, we shall search Okay. Uh, you go along for a little while. Uh, the nest is uh, uh, the, the nest itself. Shadow's character is quite confident you're getting closer, but it's deeper than you would expect. So it takes you about an hour to get deep enough. Is uh, I'm saying you're traveling slowly to be safe. And then Car uh, Shadow's character yells, "Stop!" Takes a big old whiff. Around here. Start sweeping the lights. All right. You takes you uh, about 15 minutes, but you eventually do find. Two, oh, two nests. One next to each other. One nest with 15 eggs and the other with two eggs. Who's laying the all eggs are things? probably more worth more. They're worth 50,000 a piece. Here's the thing though the eggs are about the size of a fist. Where's the problem? Well, he, no, he was he was about to say that uh, the problem is we might have to make room for the fish. Uh, no, the eggs are small enough that could literally be put in one of the crew cabins. No, that's why I was asking is how, how big they were. That way we could, yeah. for storage. And how close and are that, they to hatching? Uh, this one I will actually ask for a roll from uh, Shadow's character. Can you roll That is man? it. Sure. That may not technically take time, but since you want to know right now, uh, it literally looks at him and says, they are a week or two? I don't know. These eggs look a little different from the ones I'm used to. Not like there's anything wrong with them different, but. Okay, how big are they when they hatch? Uh, about the same size as they came out. They hatch full grown? Or uh, about no, they uh, they're about fist size when they hatch. Okay. Big enough so to what I'll do a lot of different things actually. What what I'll do is I will modify one of the cages just to be on the safe side. And then we'll just load them all in the cage because even if they all hatch, they'll all still fit in one cage. Yeah. Well, so 
I kind of sorry, Shadow Titan took a little, little bit of roll for you. You know for a fact that if you put the in the uh, the eggs in a refrigerator, not a freezer, you'll uh, slow down the metabolic rate without killing them. So it'll take longer to hatch. I assume we have a uh, refrigeration unit of some sort. Yes. I. <clears throat> okay. Is it like the old ice box that my grandparents used to have, or is it an actual fridge? It's an actual fridge. And okay. I presume, given Bruce's the way Bruce has, has his attitude with his chef, it's lockable. <laughs> Absolutely. No caviar. <laughs> I was just wondering how these taste raw. <laughs> kind of punchy. <laughs> I've never. I haven't considered that, so I don't know, honestly. What do you think of black licorice whenever you mix it with a little bit of maple syrup and a lot of spam added in with some leg quarters from some poultry? Hey, I don't eat spam. I, I think I'm in the wrong restaurant. Okay, so <laughs> let's not eat shit raw. Uh, some things are delicious for all. Listen, if you want to be an unsavage, uh, a savage barbarian, I'm probably not going to be in this kitchen for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a windy oh. sir. As you get your uh, the care of the sh uh, things aboard the ship, the uh, let's we'll see if the refraction is missed first. Nope. Okay. The captain does notice that there is not necessarily not not guaranteed to be man-made, but some of the cave structures look a little uniform. I suggest Captain we uh, explore these caves a little bit more, just in case. Hey, Bear. What's up, Bear? Hopefully we Big bad bear. bear. Anyway. Uh, as you explore, you notice that the ship isn't going to fit anymore. But uh, you can also tell that there is a a uh, chamber just beyond the passage that the ship can't fit. There's uh, there even anything like a in. rowboat or, or something like that. Yeah, there there are uh, escape. Sh there's a uh, dinghies or something. Yeah, I'll say the ship has a couple dinghies. It is big and have some. There's no hanging off the side. They're in a hatch near the back. No, the cave I'll isn't big enough that you can it. turn around, so. Okay. Uh, this time the... Oh, no, my mistake. The cat is uh, going along, not staying. Anybody staying? At this point, the uh, guys are pretty confident nothing's going to attack the ship. So if you all want to leave, the captain's not too worried about it this time. Yeah. Wait, where am I on this? I thought I was with Shadow's character. Oh, you guys went back to the ship to okay. smoke out the animals, basically. Uh, well, the one that was left. All right, well, so yeah, so who's going along, everybody? I guess so. if they make me aware of what's going on, I will leave the kitchen to go on this away mission. But if nobody comes and gets the chef, the chef is staying with the ship. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, by now, lunch, I will say lunch, uh, uh, dinner, actually, we, you went in at the evening. By now, uh, dinner has been served. So, ah, beautiful.
So, anybody going to go tell the chef then? I will. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. All right. Well, you all head off down the ship, head off down uh, the tunnel. We'll say, uh, given the amount of you and the size of dinghies for a ship this size, well, the two di you have two dinghies. As you go along, the, the tunnels are big enough for the dinghies to be next to each other. I don't know what order you want to be in, but... As you go along, the terrain is obviously getting more and more hand carved until you come across what is obviously the opening of a uh, a large um, cavernous area that in this case is natural but there's a artificial building a temple pyramid shaped right in the middle but the obvious entrance at the bottom not the top Proceed toward it cautiously. Okay. Are there any obvious uh, carvings or anything like that that would be that we could possibly recognize? <clears throat> um, let's see here. The uh, refractionist immediately notices some uh, carvings and things that suggest this is from uh, an un, not necessarily an undiscovered culture, but an unfamiliar to him. Unfortunately, something the refractionist does know is that there, are, this world has is so old that there's uh, cultures long since forgotten. And the world doesn't have the, the, our level of communication. So if someone had discovered this particular techno, uh, this particular culture, he, does, he hasn't heard of it. With that said, the, uh, if he were to spend several hours, he could probably translate it. Not really that. Look, I'm pretty cool, sure that it's a pretty cool ancient re ancient relic. Historical value and all that stuff, but we got money to make. I was about to say, does anybody have a piece of paper and some, like, charcoal? Oh, God. Well, the entrance is... No. I can, I can save it into, into my memory. That and works, too. It will. Does your... Uh, Sorry, I was about to say, does your character's eyes like project memories? Like, could we watch a movie every other Friday night? Uh, that would depend on what he did with his eyes. <laughs> but that is an option. Technically, yes. It, it's okay. meant to be very open, very anime. <laughs> unless it, it's unless it, the GM says no, pretty much anything's allowed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> his <laughs> life. A, a movie about our adventure from his perspective. The rest of the crew looks like blumbling idiots. <laughs> of course. Except for the chef. Yeah. The chef is the chef is the hero. <laughs> chef is always the hero. What are you guys talking about? It's Stop big it. trouble, little China, all over again. No, it's sudden impact all over again, or not sudden? No. Yeah. Well, uh, Steven Seagal. Big uh, Big Trouble in Little China is the only one I know that where they the main character is not actually the main character. You mean Under Siege, Steven Seagal? The yes, that was? one. Deep Impact is, 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 is was something completely different. Oh yeah, that was a very much different movie. <laughs> is that the Morgan Freeman uh, movie? Yes, also known as Armageddon, but done better. Oh. Well, no, it's Armageddon when it actually hit the Earth. Armageddon with actual acting. Armageddon <laughs> the next day. Yeah. Like I said, it's a, 
the far superior movie. It's more boring, but it's a it's a much better movie. Better uh, yeah. better acting, better plot, everything's better. It's not Michael Bay, so it's automatically better. Promotes teenagers getting married. Shows a comment impacting. <laughs> not I saw that not, one here. Fuck you, Connell, come on from the guy. <laughs> yeah. But also, yeah. <laughs> not not throwing a bunch of fucking dr- uh, I, you know, oil rig dudes up into space to, to Aerosmith. That's all I fucking need. In armored space shuttles, two of them. Uh, sometimes all you need is just, you know, Michael Clark Duncan and a handful of brave, brave men to go up and fix problems. There was two lines from our game. And a Catlin gun for no fucking reason. I, you know, I Kai for the Russian most part. Russian Russian parts. parts. Made in Taiwan. Damn it, Baron, you beat me to it. There's two lines from Armageddon that was the best that year. That was one of them. And now, my guys, everyone played taxes again. Oh, uh, wow. Like, anybody, anybody know about how gnomes work in Palladium? How they're kind of like the tinkerer race? No, but okay. Kind of, but okay. Uh, he, here's, the, here's the thing. One time I was playing, a, uh, I was a player, not a GM. I was playing a wolfen in space, and I literally pulled the Russian. I because uh, we could we couldn't get a system to work, so I started beating it, going, uh, "Wolf and components, human components, all made on Nomia." <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back to oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, so we uh, get to the temple. The uh, the te- uh, the entrance itself is not blocked. It doesn't look like it's in it. like the temple is in surprisingly good condition, and the refractionist can't find any traps around the entrance. So, so obviously it's trapped. How far? Anybody how tall is the te- uh, How tall is the ceiling? Uh, let's see here, I'd say about seven foot tall. Tall enough for your average construct. Hmm. So who wants to go first? Well, oh, I'm sending. Won't. I'm you're, sending you're the. Uh, I'll, I'll lead the way, but I'll I'll just walk on the ceiling. I'm so thankful well, I, that you guys are not playing Operation Let the Darkie Lead. <laughs> well, I was a uh, as GM. I'm about to say, uh, don't forget, Connell. You're made of fire. Unless it spits ice, you're not going to take any damage. Honestly. I have no worries about where I'm at because wherever I'm at, I'm in blocking range. So it's okay. Yeah. I I, um, wherever I want to be. I activate my, um, actually, right before we go into the tunnel, I take off my pants and I hand them to a, a, the sniper, say, hold these as I go flame on. You hold your drawers. Hey, I'm hey. Already, I'm already down the tunnel. No, nope, no, nope, you're going to hold my pants. I don't want them nope. to burn. Then hang them outside. I'm sure no one. And leave them on the did phone. You forget, uh, did you forget that you um, make your own pants? All oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So, oh damn it! I just want <laughs> want them to hold my pants. I ain't holding your nasty ass drawers. <laughs> hold these. <laughs> All right. I, anyways, I will just go. I'll I, I'll I will do a Johnny Storm flame on and walk in uh, while lighting up the cave. Well, you start walking in. Next week, and you I'm immediately going, going through. I, I was just going to let him know that next week on the schedule, we got over 70 pounds of potatoes I'm going to be peeling. So if you need some new pants, I'll save you the burlap sacks. <laughs> as you walk, uh, as you're walking through, you with your light, you quickly notice that someone or something that it obviously wasn't phased by because there's no body triggered the only trap at the entrance already. It just wasn't visible because the refractionist didn't go in deep enough. This is like about tw- 10 to 20 feet deep, deep. So refractionist only checked the first uh, fifth, uh, five feet or so. Ah. But, uh, but it looks like uh, it appears to be safe since the only trap you see 
that you know for a fact anyway has been already set off and you aren't setting off any others. What kind of trap was it? Uh, fall, uh, ball and chain falling from the ceiling. Classic. Uh, the old ball and chain gag. Yep. We left our wife here. <laughs> so you're going to tell everyone it's safe? Or yeah. Keep going. I'm going to tell everybody it's safe and go back well, to my you... normal flaming attire. Well, as you go along, you notice. Uh, no more, nothing that resembles a trap or nothing gets triggered at the very least. And as you walk by, there's a, a tunnel about 50 foot in that leads off to your right. All right. It's about 20 feet long. Um, I guess I tried to go Kadukin. And see if I can make a, a small ball of flame go down that tunnel, uh, you know, light it up a little bit. You can do that. Kadukin! <laughs> well, as it lights up, it hits uh, what's obviously a metal door. But it doesn't appear to be 100% sealed. All right. I let them know there's a door at the end of the hallway. And keep moving forward. Okay. Uh, Connell, give me a uh, percentile roll, please. Oh, okay. <clears throat> that would be a 69. 67. <laughs> You're not going to finish that with something sexual? <laughs> you feel nice. on your left side, about 15 feet from the first uh, hallway and about five feet from the next, you feel something. It's really weird. It's like a pull on your flames and yet a growth at the same time. Um, it grabs my attention. Um <laughs> Ooh. I tell everybody to stand back as I could do a Kadukin that that down that way. Oh sorry, I forgot to say it. you feel it off your left side at the Or my left side? Yeah. Which All is right. a wall. Oh there's a oh. I move my hand up against the wall. Seeing if I could find I don't know. A trigger, a latch, something. Give me a percentile roll, please. Eighteen. In your state of still learning to control your fire, yeah, you find a small crack, then your hand just kind of goes through it by turning to flame. Okay. Uh, quick GM's note like I'm pretty sure Kai thought of this at some point you're made of flame if there's so much as a crack in something you can go through it I mean I, honestly I wasn't going to say I wasn't going to say shit but I mean if you want to find the crack in the, the, crack in the airflow if you're made of fire and smoke and crap you literally just hold a finger up and just follow where the, where the flame points you know yeah. I let the... Um... I'm not saying shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> As I'm figuring this out, I will, if I can, morph myself, Mr. Fantastic, leaving half my body still out as my head and my arm disappears through the crack. Yeah, you can do that. Wow, that's funky. 
Okay, I keep go. I, I go. I just keep pushing to like the very end. Well, it doesn't take long. the The wall is uh, no more than six inches thick. Okay. At least to this room. You quickly notice a small room about triangle shaped and about uh, twenty feet. Yeah, twenty feet at its longest and about fifteen feet at its shortest. With a yeah, with a triangle shape to it. Yeah. Uh, considering I'm fired, does it light up the? Do I light up the room long uh, enough where I can see what else is in there? Well, you can. Okay. How are you doing so? I I brighten. Okay. You see a bunch of barrels. Some of them colored with safety yellow, like our world safety yellow. Oh, shit. Others solid black. Right. A couple of them are leaking different colors. But you immediately recognize the colors as all colors from the different colored suns. Intriguing. I um, move back. I, I morph my body back to the other side, uh, uh, through back to the wall. And I let the rest of the party know. I was like, hey, there's a hidden wall, a uh, hidden room there that has barrels of uh, rainbow brightness in them. That sounds disgusting. It could be profitable. Um, I'll... Open the door. What? Can you open the door from the inside? Yeah, I, I just shimmy. I, I uh, morph my body back to where I get to go through the crack again, and the entire my entire body goes through this time. Okay. You quickly find a lever on the inside. I pull it. You get cut in half. Ah! Except you made a flame, so it does nothing to you. But I don't know that. I mean, I know that I'm... I yes. still have my... You just hear a loud fuck. Oh, as I'm patting myself in the middle or down my side, it depends on how it cuts me in half, horizontally or vertically. Vertically. <laughs> you wouldn't believe this. I just had a splitting head headache. <laughs> oh, better you than us. Um, I get out of the way. And then you, uh, you, uh, yeah, we'll say as you're looking around trying to figure out what just happened, you notice there's another lever much higher than the first one. All right. Well, the trap is already gone, so I think it should be safe for the people's. Yeah. All right. I open the door. I step aside. And, yeah, the um, second lever opens the door. All right. I always hated when secret rooms had a lever that was easy to access. It's like, I always felt like the first, there should be two levers. One easy to find, one the harder to find. An easy one to find is just kill the person who managed to sneak in. That works. So, as I said, I open up the door for him. I step aside, yeah. go back to my natural, my normal one with the flame board shorts and flaming Hawaiian shirt. All right, we'll have to say Baron. Uh, well, let me double check which your. Uh, I, I got character sheets set up here. So I need a, a mental perception, please. Uh, D20. Roll under nine. I rolled a Roll nine or under seven. You immediately notice all the uh, the leaking barrels is liquefied, very rare. No one knows how to do it in the modern age, but liquefied uh, sun uh, sun gems. This stuff is so rare. You are going to like as a character. I'm not I'm, I'm not going to say you have to, but as a character, your first thought is to not give it up because the chances well, are you'll never see is... a barrel of the stuff again. 
I am going to go and attempt to seal the leaking barrels. Kai, you want to transport? No. Okay. God. Well, oh, yeah, that'll just take a. That yeah, that'll just take a little bit of time. Well, about, I, I'm um, trying to do. I'm trying to do it, you know, expeditiously, so we don't yeah. lose more. So I rolled a two. Oh, low is good. So I'm gonna. I pull out my a, pull out my uh, pull out my little welding torch and weld real super fast. Spot weld. There's 20 barrels in here, and there we go. Is the captain with us? Yes. Uh, we're keeping at least barrels. three of these. Yeah. Uh, nine of the barrels were leaking, and it took you about an hour to seal all nine of them up with a, with a roll of two. Yeah, I, I look at the captain, and I said, we're keeping uh, at least five of these. Let's see here. Um, there is a barrel of uh, at least one barrel of each color. So that's five? That includes silver. No, six colors. Oh, six. Okay. We're keeping one of each. Yeah. I'm sure he'll be well, okay with that. Yeah. The captain is kind of leery on the idea of actually selling them to begin with. Wars have been fought. Over these. Do? That's I just mean, it. This is know. the uh, for yeah for Fallout fans. This is the um, fuck. What's it called? The plot that kills the party. No. Um, <laughs> this is the. Uh, 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 this is the FEV virus, basically. Oh, we all die. Did I just say that? Well, yes and no. The thing is, is uh, in the in the um, Fallout universe, the FEV virus literally can do anything. This stuff, nobody has not been able to find a use for it. It is. The only substance that is quote unquote more valuable than honey problem is unlike honey that has a steady supply this stuff is so rare nations will go to war over one barrel so the captain's a little leery to, the captain's a little leery to let any of that stuff even leave this chamber we're all gonna die thanks to this good we're still taking one of each color with us Regardless, why would we not take every last drop? We are now targets. The entire world is out to get us. You know, I know a few of us are going. A few of you guys are going to disagree with me, and that's fine. But I have the notion of pushing you all out of the room and blowing up this room and walking away. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a super mutant. <laughs> I don't want the real military coming after my ass. But we don't tell them. Okay, so all of us but you die first. We made death claws, and we mass produce flying death claws and unleash them on the world. Yeah, we, we've literally found the rarest thing on the planet, and, and you want to just toss it away? Yes. Yes. Do I do I see this, Mister no no, uh, uh, Crafting Gamer? Do I see this? Flying terror asks everywhere. That's yeah. what we're going to create. Well, I presumed everybody walked into the room. It's big enough for everybody to be in here. You know how you keep a secret between three people? You kill I, two of them. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse me, gentlemen. We aren't just going to leave this place and leave that commodity right there, are we? Oh, yeah. 
I'm going somewhere yeah. else. Excuse me. You guys figure out this, and I'm going to go and, I don't know, look for the arrival of a battleship or something that's probably hunting us about now. I mean, if we're going to get wanted, might as well get wanted for the right reasons. Yeah, I'm going to go outside now. You guys figure this out. I'm going to go outside and go and be the first one to scream when uh, when bad things happen. Excuse me. I think I'm going to join you there, uh, Kai. I, I think yeah. taking this out of the room is asininely stupid. Pushing my glasses up and going, I'm out of here. That makes no sense. Okay, just, just just from a crafting standpoint, I could actually make armor for you in your fire form. I'm not saying there's not a ton of benefits that would okay. come from your stuff, but I'm not saying that the I'm not 100 sure the juice is worth the squeeze. It never is worth the squeeze, but we, you ain't gonna wait forever anyway. We don't You're have right. to squeeze it. It's already juice. Exactly. Help me get this barrel the fuck back on our ship. We're going to make us some money. This is my 1.4 billion Powerball payout. Mama, I'm coming home. Actually, yeah. what exactly. if we were to actually sell these barrels discreetly, which I'm assuming the captain would know discreetly. someplace to sell these discreetly, correct? Is his name Kopech? Yes. Because that's the worst broker I've ever used. <laughs> hey, Jeff is a natural. Ain't got no hope. Ain't got no chance. I was about to say, Jeff Kopech is a national treasure. Oh, he, he is a national treasure. I, I believe you. But I don't want to have I don't want to have him get his prints on this. He's gonna die. 110 pounds. Going man. back to going back to what I said. Is there a way that we can discreetly sell this like, and move on? Uh, yes. Like, is it really? Okay. A... Yes. Uh, quick explanation. Pirates? You guys. Yes, you're pirates. That, that, okay, that's the quick explanation. Okay, slightly less quick explanation. Uh, you guys are know for a fact you are less than a month's journey away from the Purple Nation. The, that is currently the closest nation to where you are. And this is considered open territory. So uh, even if the ar even if a full armada came to this island, it would not be considered out of place because they are you are more than six months out from any other nation. So even if you go like if you go straight to the blue nation and sell this information to them, they could show up with an armada and nobody will notice because they're too far away from the other nations. Okay, how Don't much forget, this, would fifteen barrels of this be worth? Retirement. One um, be retirement. Fifteen be legacy building. Yeah, let's just say, uh, just put down infinite next to your finances. Yep, this is because even if because even if you don't like sell, even if you don't get all the money at once, you basically anytime you go to the Purple Nation, you'll be given the equivalent of a credit card. I'm I'm uh excuse me, Mister Dungeon Master. I'm looking for a a little That's broker nation, by the name of Elliot Blitzer. Elliot Blitzer, he is a uh, little <laughs> scrawny. A uh, little, little, little wuss of a man, but he represents a very, very powerful force in media. A man by the name of Lee Donowitz, and I think we could probably take this uh, this wonderful masterpiece which we have available, and we could broker through Elliot Blitzer to Mister Lee Donowitz, and we could we could have ourselves a happy retirement. Yes, you could. But uh, Kai, I need you to give yes. me a well. Kai and Connell, give me each a mental perception roll, which is your D twenty. All righty. Uh, roll a three out of nine. I rolled a five. 
You got a nine, Kai? Uh, three, uh, three out of nine. Connell said five. Kai said nine, right? No, he, he three, three, oh. I, which is MP of nine. I rolled a three, okay. so that matters. If margin of success matters, sorry, I don't know. Okay. Well, well, in this instance, yes and no. It all depends on how you want to react. Uh, you both of you notice something that startles the fuck out of you, given what you've already seen. A honeybee. <laughs> you know what? At this One point, of the giant four-foot like, long honeybees. You know what? On a scale of things I care about, this, you know, an hour ago, I would have been, a bee, it's so amazing. There's probably a hive, so much. Now it's like, man, nah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna make a. I'm gonna yeah. Okay, I'm never mind. It's a, write yeah. down how awesome a bee is, and then compare it to. I could go buy an entire island <laughs> or two, in a bit. Or fifty. Right. I heard the word uh, infinite. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Hi there, bee. You're cool. Is but there? Now you, but now you're peasant drink. I don't care about you now. <laughs> <laughs> that stuff was leaking right so it got into the soil yes which means the, the soil got into whatever has been pollinated which could have got into the honey oh dear god you're right you're right this island is now polluted it's now it's now a brown site we can't allow anyone on this island we should sink it yes i think <laughs> I, I, I really miss the rest of the crew, but I think this this, this island's just got to go. No, no, we got a boat. I like the crew. Crew can stay. But that bee's probably scary now. We just don't realize it yet. Well, you guys but actually... Point. Well, you guys... No, Sorry. we're having this little conversation back and forth. And I'm just waiting for a death claw to come over, over a ridge and then go, oh, hells. <laughs> well... The uh, room contained most of the pollution. It's uh, all hard rock. The uh, silver seems to have leaked and actually melted the rock slightly. So it could have contaminated the soil. It could have. Yeah. You ever heard of the stuff called mad honey? Yeah. Now we have mercury. Yes, I want to get some. Thank you very much. Whoa! <sighs> Should we let the crew know that there might be a hive? Yeah, you're faster than me. You can burn back there. Tell them. Because uh, you, you could not touch the Actually, ground. no, you you're float. faster, Kai. Uh, yeah, but unfortunately, I touch the ground. I don't feel like walking in sewage. Um, no. Well, technically, you all—all all of you are right there. You guys are just inside. You guys are t you and Connell outside the room. I assumed that we were outside, out, out, like outside the you know outside. I, outside, outside. Because that's where we were heading. Was outside, outside. Oh, yeah. oh, I thought you were saying outside the room. No, I no, out, no, we were outside, outside. Because fresh air away from the, from the um, you know the terrible. The terrifying green glue, I uh, green goo of mutant uh, mutants. No, I do, not want to become, I do not want to become a member of the Toxic Avengers. I have no desire to be a super mutant. I'm sorry. I I like my skin where it is. I was just referring to the fact that no one has been able to find something that can't be used for in some way. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I get that. I get oh, that. I'm gonna. The first thing I'm doing is I'm going to. Fully augment everything. I would I be a that. super mod, y'all. I go back. I go back into the uh, cave and go to where the chef is, and tell him to follow me out. Okay, Mister Chef. And he died. Sorry about that. I was I was looking at something. Um, <laughs> That's fine. We uh, 
I think we must preserve this uh, commodity which we have been blessed with. Uh, I want to start my cult now. <laughs> <laughs> As I'm leading you, uh, do you follow me outside? Where are you going? I we're, we're, I need to take you. You need to follow me outside. Outside. All right, I'm grabbing one of the barrels. We need to start shipping these into the, putting these in the ship. <clears throat> are these barrels? I mean, are these actual wooden barrels, or are they like ponies? What are they? They're metal barrels. Okay, they look hey. a lot like our world barrels. What? Fifty-five, 55 gallons from the toxic waste. That's what they got. <sighs> It's not toxic. Well, for ease of math, I did 50 it's pounds. Retirement plan. Or 50 gallons. $1.4 billion Powerball. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. As we're, once we make it all the way outside, um, I just want you to know that there is a chance that you could find high end honey on this island as well. Um, okay. I got to ask you a question here. Hmm. Who owns Island? Who owns this? Uh, finders, keepers, the first person that puts a flag on it? I don't know. Let me go get a flag from the ship then. Hold on. Uh, we gonna retire. Yeah, we gonna you would right. know this, Bruce. You're, in, you're basically the equivalent of international waters. Um, this is our island now. Uh, if you're telling me that I have the two most valuable commodities available, I'm going to um, do everything in my power. Do I know if the bees travel far dis distances, or do they normally keep? Uh, they're, not gonna, they're not going to. They're not going to travel six hours over water. They're going to come back here after flying around for about maybe fifteen minutes over water, and they're going to come right back. They got a good sense. The of furthest a, the furthest a bee will go out is overnight, and even then they try in their very hard to do that. But they fly far and fast enough. There could be another island away, but even you guys travel. At max speed, probably about the same speed as a honeybee. So, even if there isn't one, and uh, even if the hive isn't on this what, island, what, it's what, going to be easy to get What type of hyped up, steroid addicted honeybees are on this island? Because most honeybees, they're not going to outpace an airship, man. At their size, at the the with the way the islands are spread out on the on the world, they kind of have to. Oh fuck! Wait, how fast can I fly? Uh, with your flames. Probably about as like once again, we're trying to be more cinematic than anything. I would actually say you could probably keep up with the bees because flames, like I said, in my world, if they don't have anything to be attached to, have no weight. Like Mach 1? Uh, I'd say up to the point your flames are getting put out. <laughs> oh, it's a shame my character's not 19. <laughs> Did you hear a boom? No, not yet. Boom! boom Where's the earth shattering Marge kaboom? <laughs> I want to break the speed. Uh, so I want to break the uh, sound barrier. Because <laughs> why not? Donald's over there trying to relive the last Gran Turismo movie. <laughs> Okay. So basically, so basically saying you want to follow a bee. Yeah, I'll follow the bee. If if it's not the, well, so I get back and it's gone, it's gone. But if it's still there, I'll and if I already take off, I'll fall. Uh, I'll tell the group that I'm following the bee to see where it goes. Because well, well, you, you find. You find uh, three bees. Uh, you find uh, three bees in this cave. Each of them going after different flowers. Obviously, yeah. like interestingly enough, there are fungal flowers. They don't pollinate right the way that uh, the way normal plants do. They they still pollinate like fungus. But where the bees come into play is the fact that the bees will actually bring uh, different types of pollens that the funguses digest. Basically, what the bees get out of it is more protein rich. Uh, I don't know why I'm telling you guys that. That's unnecessary information. Sorry, got a little Sorry. got a little deep there. This is kind of weird because most bees I know they 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 go to sleep. They're not nocturnal. They they don't even have guards at night because the power of uh, not having the sun available 
just completely waxes them and they they fall out uh that's why most termina terminix and organ professionals if there's a bee to remove that they got to remove a hive they try to do it after dark because the bees are not going to be out and about crawling around trying to get on top of this guy and you know muck up his entire suit they're going to be oh i think somebody's moving the nest all right well let's, we'll find out when the sun comes up and that's about how they work if well, these are all these are different that's fine but that's just how honeybees are Steam well, my game insects. is a little bit different but okay it the thing is is that they have to be able to survive a night away from the colony because it doesn't it, like biologically in this world it wouldn't make sense if they couldn't survive at least one night away simply because even at their size and their ridiculous speed they have to travel far to get to different islands and four foot honeybee on a 35 foot 35 mile by 35 mile island would not be supported yeah it could be the entire island would have to be nothing but flowers and even then that might not be enough all right so uh, go ahead and move check somebody else but i'm just following the bees around see where they're going well i really hate my dice what's going on with guys ought to ought to that the bees would be actually located on this island awesome I'm going on the ship. I'm going to go find a piece of um, cloth. I'm going to make a flag. I'm planting a flag. We are now the people who own this this island because everyone else doesn't have a flag. We have it. It's our island now. Indeed. Yeah. Mind you, there are plenty of forces that'll fight you for it just for the hive, let alone the barrels of juice, I will basically. Happily... Good. Good. Oh, something that you would definitely be aware of, Mr. Chef. The Purple Nation does not have access to its own hive, so they have to pay out the nose for honey. So don't let them know about this island. Nope. So it is only a month from their border. Good. We have a month of I <laughs> we have a month of them of them not knowing where we're at, so it's okay. Okay, so like so our first goal is is that when we get the money, the first round of money, we refit the ship into a hot rod, um, a hot rod. What do you mean ship as in singular? <laughs> Look, we need a person. As much as I would like to say that we need a map, a massive, a massive, a, a glorious battleship. No, we need a hot rod that we can dot. And we could dive into a cloud bank and lose pursuit, so that way all those. I slow... meant ships. I meant plural. Okay. Where do you trust anyone knowing where this island is? No, this is ours, our little place. No, no, we, we, we make more. We make more barons somewhere else. We make Nobody more barons to work for us. <sighs> That's a horrible idea. I'm not. I am not playing one of my empire builders. I am not playing one of my characters <laughs> that does this stuff. Be I am Just not you know, playing. Uh, I am not playing an inquisitor. I am not playing an ISB officer. I'm not part of the uh, of the ubiquitous. I am playing a stupid samurai whose intelligence is low as fuck. We go sky. So I am a dumb. I, I am a dumbass. Who doesn't know shit? I do not well, know what I'm thinking. I, technically, I set you on the path of being a Joshu, which in Japanese means lord of a castle or keep. I know, but unfortunately, my perception is not that great. <laughs> my intelligence just like domain level. I am okay, <laughs> but I'm not what I would call the genius who I... No, I'm going to shut the fuck up now because my character doesn't, doesn't think this way or know this shit. You know what happens to a bunch of those people that win the big lottery? You know how they lose it so, so freaking fast, their shadow? They buy stupid shit. 
buying more ships would be considered doing stupid shit. I have a question. Are there more rooms to this structure? There's at least uh, the t there's the two uh, there's at least one more tunnel you guys haven't checked, and then there's the uh, first room that uh, Connell oh. found. I'm, and I'm well, we're going to check, so we're gonna check down the tunnel. The... I'm 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 taking my my mech my my sidekick with me, and we're going to go check the other tunnel. Okay. At the so you're, you're checking the one that Connell didn't check then. The, um, you said the tunnel. We're checking down oh, the tunnel. Oh, the main tunnel. Okay, yeah. God, Duncan. Well, down the main tunnel, you find a huge, and I mean like hundred, uh, 50, 60, 60, 60, 60, so yeah, oh, oh, well over a hundred foot by a hundred foot room. Is there anything in this room? Uh, yes and no. There is a lot of furniture, and it looks like this was once a temple, like an actual temple, temple, religious-wise, okay. to what uh, you, uh, you uh, Brayron, excuse me, would definitely appreciate. For some reason, they were worshipping a steam work, a steam clock dragon god statue thing. Heresy! I walk over. Is, is the statue still there? It's the void yes. dragon. No. Okay. I'm going to it, examine said dragon to see if there's anything in it or around it or near it. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll have you give me a uh, percentile roll, please. Well. You notice that this is probably 60% incomplete, but the makings of a construct. They were probably worshiping it from the whoever was here, probably worshiped it while it still had worked. And then eventually it just shut down and they were worshiping it while it was still shut down, hoping that it would work. That's, that's what it kind of looked this? like. Uh, from snout to tail, fully stretched out, it's about 60 feet. So a little bit shorter than your ship but its body proportions are appropriate to that so it's overall not that big and do i have the parts to fix it uh hold on well go ahead and give me another percentile roll from who uh baron ought to ought <laughs> Well, with the uh, role I made for myself, you have the parts. Some of them you'll have to make yourself, but you're quite confident you can get this thing up and running within a week. I tell the captain to continue making payments on the ship, not to let anybody know that you came across a huge windfall. Hell to the fuck, no. I'm already a little sketchy with the idea of selling some of the barrels to begin with, but as long as we keep it on the down low, it should be hopefully fine. So you agree but with me? Yeah, it, it's it's. I don't want to give up the opportunity that has been presented in front of us, but damn, it is scary. Yeah. I can see Kai's engine revving over there as he keep trying to uh, slam his foot on a brake. No, I'm not playing that character. Knock it off. But that's a really good idea. Shut up! <laughs> um, just out of curiosity, how many of the Gollum that I have parts could I scavenge to make this work? Oh, uh, off the barrel Gollum you already have? Yeah. Uh, none. Okay. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> Upgrade. Wait, what? I mean, well, well that, I shouldn't say none. You could probably use the silver. You could probably use the silver gem 
brain over again. But its programming is meant for a creature the size and shape of a barrel golem. I'll, I'll uh, get up and see, look into where the, the uh, memory core is and see if it's intact. Well, that's one of the missing pieces. It doesn't have a memory core. Oh. That's a sideways blessing. Well, but that's one of the things I can use some stuff out of one of those silver barrels, isn't it? Yeah. You'd have to hard you have to find a way to harden it, but that falls under your wheeled house, so it'd just be a matter of time. Yeah. Is Okay, so this island is not on any map, correct? Nope. Oh. Okay, so we could use this island as a storehouse because it is off the beaten path. No one's been here. No one knows where it's at. Well, somebody. So, the only person, the only person okay. who knows for a fact this island is near here, not necessarily that it's right where it is, but it's anywhere near here. Is your the guy who you bought the sh uh, the captain technically bought the ship from your previous captain, but that's because he was sending you to a different island to hunt these fish. Right. So it would it would probably be not intelligent to take all of them at once. Take one at a time as we I, as we need it. We use the island as a storehouse, hidden secret. We disguise the mountain at the, the cave entrance so that way it doesn't even look like a cave. And then we pretend that it that this place doesn't exist. This is the reason why, while I love and support the idea of having a fleet of ships, we only have the one hot rod that we need to come here, and then everybody else goes up is stay is we that we eventually will pay for will stay somewhere else, and that way, in case we are ever being chased by the, you know, because once we drop off one barrel. We're going to be on every one on the on the universe's ra uh, radar at that moment. They're all going to know. They all want to know where we found it. And if we're in some little slow tub, I point over at at our tumble home hauled weird bag together ironclad with a four story house built on top of it. That's being pushed around by four, by, by six by six flappy fish. Uh, I fish um fins and go, we ain't the fastest thing in the universe. We're not the most heavily armed thing in the universe. And we can't outrun shit. Hey guys. So the moment that so the moment that anyone, you know, when we go sell say off of the purple kingdom, we ain't got I if they want to find us, they're gonna be able to I follow us. So we need to be able to outrun the fastest piece of shit on the I, out in the skies. So if we ever want to come back here and not be chased, followed, or anything else. So we need to, I don't know, find the wreck of a battleship and build a bigger, better, more awesome ship under that wreck. And then <laughs> fly away with the best, most awesome engine in the universe and come back here to go, to go, buy, to go steal another container when we need to go repair or pay. If our infinite money runs out, we go sell another infinite money barrel. And let nobody know that, that this island exists. It's got honey, which we can sell, you know, for pocket change. <clears throat> it's got the infinite money button that we can press whenever we feel like. And we are going to be murdered by everybody for knowing this. So, yes, I, I want a hot rod that's, that is you know piloted by a space trucker and a, a, a and a wookie um <laughs> i i don't want i don't want a flying hotel i don't want a flying cheese wedge i don't want some slow ass thing that requires a thousand people which which i will now have to sl slip all their throats because they now know where this place is at i want i want i want a, a bugatti veyron of, of airships I want a button that says, are you sure when we hit the speed button to get back here? So oh, that, God, they went flood. That's right. So if any, so that way, if we're, look, if we're looking behind us and we see an imperial bat, sorry, a 
insert color here, I ship the line, and it's following us. We could just go plaid and leave them behind. And they'll wonder, where the fuck so did they go? We so basically, you want a CUDA burst. Pretty much. You can call it whatever you want. I just want what I want. I want a thousand turkey thunderbird. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, and, but I just, <laughs> but okay. we, could, we could own a whole fleet. We could do, my God, Shadow's idea of making our own little country, of having our own Navy. And, you know, I will happily have the, uh, the, the, the Gamelon uh, theme music playing when we do so. Yes. I'm Skippy. Fuck yes. But we got to No, take... no, no. No, no. Gamelon, no. White Comet Empire. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I want a fleet of Wait, white stars. Do it right. Be the better. What was that? I want a fleet of white stars. I don't know. White Comet Empire just sounds more cooler. <laughs> Right, white stars are awesome, but white comedy. Have all five white stars. We're coming to where was that? So I'm I'm trying to contact them through the communication stone. Yeah, guys, yeah, you come down the hall. Okay. Is the void dragon waking up? You don't know about that. Oh gosh, you're right. I don't. I'm sorry. Okay, I go ask I go ask our mechanic our mechanicus um I Arc Magos, what did you find? <laughs> All I need to do is repair it and it's fully functional. Oh, we are about to unleash unle a shard a shard of an old one. Heck yeah! <laughs> and I could hear you down through the hallway. You you, you realize you're kind of loud, right? Very much so. Okay, um, I could probably set up some kind of optics that would be able to give the entrance the appearance of the rock around it. Cool. So it would look like that's where the cave ends. Cool. Could so that... then therefore, therefore, this would be actually be hidden. It would that's take me probably want. two weeks or so. To get it fine tuned, but yeah. Hey, the thing here is, is that as far as anyone knows, we're out fishing. We are a bunch of people pulling crab traps out of the water. And Which then, if they do hard. happen to get in, uh, I can fully deck this thing out. All right. Pull on flame breath missiles. Uh, it, it, it literally could repel the firepower of the biggest battleship out there. Fix the void dragon. <laughs> All right. This 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 has no, this can't go wrong at all. Fix the nope. Nope, fix the void dragon. Nope, can't fix go it. wrong at all. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the little my little mechanicus heart is be, is is all a flutter at the idea of having the void dragon on our side. <laughs> well, a steampunk version on top of that like like literally yeah. if you imagine so, imagine if the dragon had been made by a, someone who loves steampunk oh so, so a microsoft create dragon. uh dragon <laughs> minecraft create dragon yes i am oh dear god i am uh, i am become death I, man, I, my little Necron, my little Necrons are going to be happy now. No, they won't. <laughs> this is terrifying. <laughs> I am, I don't know. I am trying not to let my pessimist like sneak into my character, but I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Me too. <laughs> well, but here's I'm the thing. Pessimist. We now so have something that can actually. defend this. We have something that can defend this. What, while we're not here, yes. Oh, that would also be me, Baron. Or you say, are you now living on the island there, Ben? Yeah, I mean that's what I do is is shoot things from far away. Anything comes anywhere near it. Okay, if we are not present on the island, this is the security system. Uh huh. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, that's we're not going to be here. All the time. 
Oh, no, no. I, I just, you know, the first couple of trips, you know, since we're so very ill prepared, I stay behind, find a nice tree and wait for people to come by. Nobody comes by. I don't shoot anybody. Anybody come you know, by? Me too. I'm going to fix the dragon. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Connell, just so you know, like little spoiler, the yeah. uh, other shoe is the fact that if one slip up, one miscalculation, and you will have our ma does after you. Not this one. is why smart Multiple. pirates killed the rest of their crew. Ah, man. But luckily, there's there's six of us who actually matter. Is there anyone else in our ship? <laughs> and only one of us that can technically fly right now. Uh, you know, the captain no. can fly. He he ate the bird fruit. He can oh. turn into a bird. That's right. Is he a peacock? Uh, actually, I was thinking a uh, great golden eagle. That's kind and of truthfully, with some of this, some of this stuff that that we found, I could literally craft a jetpack easily. Yes, actually, he could. Because I believe the red would be you would be an infinite fuel source. Let's keep the barrels. Well, you're, you're, uh, Let's keep the barrels. Your barrel golem. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, your, your barrel golem is basically steam powered. It ha it uh, uses a, a, a purple gem to create ice constantly, and then a red gem to melt that ice and turn it into steam constantly. Yeah. Is there any so, way we can start? Uh, any way that because he's made of barrels, right? Is there any way that golem, we can, yeah. any way that we could fill some of these barrels up with this? Uh, Kool-Aid, uh, Kool-Aid. Uh, that would probably be a bad Actually, idea. I was first, that was a random question. As I say, this no, example, let me, that I mean, you if, you what? If, it. if I could find a way to actually solidify, we could literally make the gym, which would mean, actually I make it. Which would actually make it more lucrative because the gems are easier to find. Granted, we're not going to probably make as much off of it, but we would still be pretty. So, who wants to hire Walter? Less Martin? than infinite? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, it depends on how much it would take to actually make a gem. I would assume it would not be much. No, it doesn't. The average gem is the size of a human eye. If not smaller, so we would still even for for one of the one of the barrels, it would actually wind up probably being an equivalent exchange of how much it is. The thing is, is that we could break it out over time. That we just happen to find these gems. Well, so you're gonna stay here. I, I'm saying this. Thing, uh, I'm, so I, I'm trying to get a handle on this. I'm not trying to be a smart ass. You're going to stay here and fix Fido, who is going to guard uh, Treasure Island. He points to, I point to Shadow's character, like uh, Crazy Ben here stays on the island and make sure no uh, true comes out as we are delivering all this stuff. Is that where we're going with this? Well, no. We're, we're going to deliver the fish. Right. None of the crew, other than us and the captain, knows about this stuff. Yeah. The, putting the barrel, I point that chef is holding, back into the room. Yeah. Delivering it, like, act like everything is normal, so the rest of the X and I of hands that we have on the ship doesn't <laughs> realize they just, you know, won the lottery. Oh, the, the, there's only seven people on the crew. It, it, the ship itself can be crewed by a uh, has a max crew of ten, but can be crewed as little by five or seven. Okay, I was I was thinking it had like <coughs> other deckhands. No, no, no. Right. no, it's just us. Okay, we're a tiny little. I we're a tiny little ship. Either way, taking the fish where we need to take them, putting the barrels back there. Once we get done with that job, oh no. Something broke. We have to stop on an island and fix it. It might take us a little bit of time, Captain Mike, boss's captain. 
<laughs> and figuring out our next play might not be a bad idea. Well, oh, and Baron, just so you know, yes. turning these into into sun gems kind of doesn't work. I mean, it, 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 you can get it to work. You can get it to solidify. But as you're carving it, the the individual lines almost carve themselves. You just do a little scrape into it, and it sinks into the perfect depth. This stuff is very intuitive. So you might be able to sell it as a new type of sun gem. We're powerful. <laughs> yeah. So we just need a Walter White and a, a, Jess, a Jesse Pinkman to break bad so we can make crystal power. I just I want to take a drink. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, well, that's kind of what you're talking about there, Baron, isn't it? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I'm not. But the thing is, here's the thing: is I am going to make them probably the size of a one to one and a half carat diamond. That type of size, right? Because something that new, because that would be equivalent to a normal sun gem, oh, sun yeah. crystal. So. The thing is, is that it wouldn't, it would actually allow it to go into a smaller component. And then that way we actually get more out of it. Gotcha. Does that sound, that, that pro, does that sound, does that make sense, CTG? Yes. Or TCG? No, blah, blah, blah. blah. Well, like I said, this stuff is basically a super substance. So whatever you do with it, it's going to be more powerful or at the very least more useful. And don't it's going to do turn, it pretty easily. But say, but, don't turn your dragon into Ultron. Ultron. No, Voltron. <gasps> but you need like five more. Dragon Zord. Infinite. Well, I mean, right now he has the ability to make multi uh, infinity ga uh, gauntlets. Yeah, he would not lose infinite in this instance. But <laughs> uh, I, nobody has. I hold on a second. Yeah, N you have not heard of anybody ever coming out with this type of sun gem. So it would take quite some time to anybody make it, it that connection if they ever do. So you can, uh, it still has the potential to go infinite. It's just the fact that instead of selling off a barrel that can easily cause you to go to war, people aren't going to question it for a good while. I like the concept of not questioning it. Now we've been concentrate. We've been concentrating on the uh, on the. Uh, the, the multi cooler uh, Kool Aid barrels that we have. We also have a way to harvest honey on this island as well. And that's no small thing by itself. No. But we are about ready to hit that two, uh, two hour mark. So these are yeah. probably yes. for next week. Yeah. For our exciting, I really country. want these barrels. <laughs> you can't have these barrels. I'm just saying we're not taking them with us right now. No, no, no. We we can we we don't have to take the barrels. We just have to claim the island. It's ours. Well, you know, Kai, do you already have your uh, flag out? You have a flag. You have a flag. <laughs> Hello, I have a flag. One moment. I got a flag. We'll get the flag out. <laughs> it's our flag now. Like it's, our, it's ours. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Does it look like that? We, I have. I have one of those two. Not as good as that one. But no, no. The flag should look like it's on a sea of blue, but it's me as as I change my shape into the middle finger, a flaming middle finger. 
<laughs> lady, have a good night, buddy. See you, lady. Because, from my understanding, I could change my I can change my form, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there's, I can literally make myself into a hand that's giving you the bird. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's our flag. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to this. This is a fun. This is a fun system that you made. Yes. It has. It's it, it, it's, it spreads it's like palladium. <laughs> I can't I'm believe it's not palladium. Over system because I haven't read the book yet. <clears throat> yeah, I, I got a. It was supposed. I was supposed to be mailed off today. The my landlord forgot. Is that your mom? Which is giving me an opportunity. I'm actually. I, I'm gonna. It's a surprise, but I 3D printed a monster to uh, to send to uh, uh, Shadow at the same time. Damn, I'm gonna have to give you my address so I get random 3D printed shit. <laughs> you, send, you send Grog anti. Uh, you yeah, you sent uh, Grog on Bruce's game uh, dice enemas. <laughs> if I had your address, I literally would send you something eventually. Uh, good. Eventually, I I'm heard. able to keep you. Shows that Shadow has been watching our game if he doesn't know what dice enemas are. So, uh, we, we are to that point uh, where we're going to be wrapping up here. Connell, what do you got coming up this week? This coming week, Sunday, Sunday, no, Saturday, you'll see me, Bruce, as a player, not a DM, as a guy who normally plays in his campaign as a DM. So, we'll be hanging out with him. I think, Bruce, you are. Filming it from your uh, live from your place. Yep, that's what I'm doing Saturday. Then Sunday, 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 me and my group are going to this very special town in uh, area of San Francisco, where it's called Chinatown, and it seemed to have some problems. It's all right though, because indeed, because well, if there. it has problems, if it has problems, what? does that mean it's little? Uh, does that mean it have big problems in Little China? Yes. <laughs> so everybody the password this week for the movie is going to be pork express you don't know it pork chop express pork chop i have to watch it again pork you're chop talking to two people who like religiously <laughs> watch this movie it's <laughs> yeah i know right ever That's since 1986 when it first debuted in theaters i've probably seen this movie in excess of over 150 times I'm only at about a hundred because it's because it's one of my favorites, but it's also my Easter my Easter movie. So, Easter okay. Long story, pretty much revolves around we didn't have a lot of money, and mom and dad wanted to shut me up. Um, it, I am before Easter dinner, so we always put so we always put on this movie. Every no, time. Wait, that's... All right, Shadow, what do you got coming up this week? Uh, well, right tonight, right after the show, a uh, little guy and I are going to show everybody out there how to make giant skeletons for your tabletop miniature games out of these super freaking cheap glow-in-the-dark Dollar Tree skeletons. And then uh, I'll be doing a bunch more Ravenloft reviews. And uh, this week on the Sci-Fi Shadow Chat, we're going to be talking about vampires in space. All right. Hi, anything interesting in the musings as of late? No, I have been very, very negligent about that. I am sorry. But and are you and Bruce doing one of your musings on uh, yes? Saturday? And hopefully, we'll actually get to the uh, I get to the topic this week. That would be cool. <laughs> but Bruce, what do you got coming up? Well, after I get done playing Skeletor in my friend Chris's game, me and Kai want to talk about this. Which is one of yes. the most interesting ideas for magicians in a game ever. And it's a it's a big book. It's a it is a book. big book. But we're gonna we're gonna start talking about this because it's it's got some neat ideas. I just want to beat about somebody's that. senseless book. Yes. <laughs> I told you that, once I want I so badly want an actual copy of that book, but all I have is the digital version. So Oh, Speaking of things with doing Kai, Kai, on October 27th, are you going to meet me at the local theater so we can go see the Holvers? Yes. <laughs> I 
All right. Last but not least, the Crafting Game or DM for the night. Uh, what have you got coming up this week? Uh, this week, I'm uh, actually not doing anything. Uh, I will actually be working on my video. I find going every other week for my video gives me far less feeling of stress and needing to get my video done. So this week, nothing. But next week, I'll be coming out with the last video of the Soviet Union in Robotech. All right. So, everybody, we definitely want to thank you for joining us uh, and taking a little bit of your time watching something we enjoy to do, which is game. Uh, and we will see you for the exciting conclusion next week of the Crafting Gamers game. Thank you, everybody. And you have a great week. Happy trails. See ya. Have a beer for me.